And we are joined today by Beth Charkey, who is strategic support for Brenner Fiedler, um, as well as Glenn Grindstaff, who is in charge of human resources for L3 Technologies, Eldon Davidson, director of customized training at uh, El Camino Community College, and Jan Vogel, who is the executive director at the South Bay Workforce Investment Board. So the goal of our panel today is we're going to be reviewing uh, you know, what some of the funding sources are available. We have both Beth and Glenn here from companies to talk about their success stories. Uh, and then uh, Jan will also share what the Workforce Investment Boards can do to help your companies. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and get right into our presentation. And so first up is Beth Sharkey of Brenner Fiedler. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, need to actually advance my slide here. Oh, I've got a message for you. So if you will all take your phone, it doesn't need an app, and if you text West Tech 17 and then put in the number 22333, we have a unique system that allows you to send questions throughout the panel to me. I receive them, and then we'll be able to have those questions. So again, West Tech 17 is the uh, number you're sending it to, and then 22333. So as we begin, uh, before Beth, before, as, as, Beth, as Beth begins, um, I wanted to kind of go, I have two slides here I just wanted to share. Um, and I know that particularly um, Eldon and Jan will appreciate some of these slides here. When we talk about training funds and grant programs and reimbursement programs, in the government sector, there's a lot of acronyms used and a lot of uh, words and, and terminology that's very confusing to companies. So I put some of the words and terminology up there. So we've got, you know, grants, dollars, reimbursement programs are also our funding, and then formula funds. These are all some of the types of ways that you can receive funding for your training. Also, when you talk about training for your company, they may be using terms as customized training, contract training, incumbent worker training. Layoff aversion. I'm going to have Jan talk about what that term means when he gets to his uh, presentation. And also, um, both Beth and Glenn represent businesses. But in the world of workforce development, they call businesses employers. So you'll hear them talk about employers. So we have businesses or employers. The employee that you're looking to train is oftentimes called a client or a trainee or an incumbent worker. Um, and then also I put up their slingshot. Um, that's one of the programs we have available. And then I've got all these acronyms, which on the next slide I went through uh, because we're going to talk about some of the programs they've used, uh, which have included the ARA programs, uh, some funding that comes to the Department of Labor, ETP, which is the Employment Training Panel Fund, our Responsive Training Fund, the TAC grants, WIA, WIOA, and Workforce Development Boards and Workforce Investment Boards. So yeah, that's a good idea to take the picture of that because <laughs> that is the, that's the glossary, uh, kind of the, the, sh the shortcuts for that. So with that in mind, Bre um, Brenner Fiedler is a small manufacturer in Riverside, California. We have an uh, audience member here from the high desert who's also a small manufacturer, so she'll probably be very interested in what you have to say, Beth. So you want to just share a little bit about some of the training that you guys have done with Brenner Fiedler? Um. We've done several programs through ETP where we have had um, either a trainer that we found that then they approved or their trainers come in. We've done 6S and 5S training. Uh, we did the 5S maybe five or so years ago. We did 6S just a little over a year ago. We had some new people, so um, new uh, advancements. We've used the uh, responsive training funds to do some leadership consulting. Um, I wrote a paper for CalCompetes where we get a tax credit based on our hiring increments that we guaranteed through um, certain funding that we get. Uh, we've done internship programs through Norco College and as well as um, we have now an apprenticeship program that we're working with uh, Norco College. We've got a new person who just started in our production department that is in that uh, program. And then, um, let's see, what else? 
Okay. So I'm going to show the next slide, which is, I know okay. is a picture. Um, yeah. Beth and I actually worked together on a project a few years ago where they started their lean journey. They had not um, you know, had any lean training before. Uh, they were able to use both that responsive training fund, which came mm -hmm. through the California Community Colleges. And then when that funding ended is when they uh, went and worked with some ETP money. Right. And one of the things we were discussing earlier, and, and Eldon's going to talk about this, is they accessed the ETP money through a local community college who then accessed it through um, El Camino College. So there's a, what you're going to hear today is the importance of collaboration and working together as a team. It's not just one source, because at different times, different um, uh, entities will have funding available to you. That Lean 5S Mean, that is actually a t-shirt. They got so inspired by their Lean journey that they made up t-shirts for all the people that uh, were in the, on the Lean team, and they very proudly wore those. Right, the whole production department, shipping and receiving, and they all, they even still wear them, so from time to time. But yeah, no, it was, they are all really proud of all the hard work they did. They did before and after posters and what things look like and they did training during the class and during the classes they actually were able to implement. So it's worked really well for us. Now this next slide is, you know, with the different funds, um, there's different rules. So sometimes the, the, the funding will cover actual training, sometimes it will cover consulting or a combination of consulting and training. Um, Beth, this, uh, this is a picture here of John Martin who is your um, automation expert, and you want to talk a little bit about the, sure. the training John has done? The reason we brought John in was because we started moving more from, St Brenner Fiedler started as a distributorship back in 1948 and has evolved into more automation. As you know, just a straight distributor with Amazon right down the street for anybody, you can't just sell product, you have to sell a solution. So as we got more into solutions solving, it went to, um, we ha have an engineering department now. We have six full-time engineers on staff, but then the engineers and the sales team would clash at times because the sales team wants to say yes to everything and the engineering team has to figure out then how to do it. So John Martin came in and he worked with the engineers, he worked with our sales team to train them in order to be able to work together what projects to say yes to, what projects to say no to, we're, we actually are still working with him, not through any ETP funding now, but now he's working with our engineers and our production department to bring them closer to the same side of the table so they can all understand how everything works. Exactly. Um, some of the other training that Brenner Fiedler is engaged uh, in is, so they have a total of 50 employees, so it's a small employer, um, is doing some leadership and strategic planning training, which is going to be supported uh, through some different programs. Mm -hmm. uh, with, being that you're in Hesperia, those of you that are in the Central Valley with Fresno um, area as well as those in the Inland Empire with um, the uh, Riverside, San Bernardino County and up in the Bay Area, uh, there is a Department of Labor program called the Slingshot Fund, uh, which LA has it but their focus is on healthcare, but in those other areas the focus is on manufacturing. So we'll be able to utilize those slingshot funding to help them with some of their leadership training um, as they look to grow and expand this new side. They've had to kind of reinvent their businesses, as Beth has said. Right. We're kind of in a plateau mode, and we're trying to break out of it and get to the next level. So we're actually going to be working with um, someone shortly to work on our strategic planning for 2018. We do it every year but we've still been kind of on a plateau, so we need to kind of shake things up and learn a new way to do things, and that's what uh, we intend to do the end of this year. And one more thing about that is Beth was sharing with me this morning that um, they have uh, three new hires that they'll be coming on board, so they've got some positions open, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to work with their local workforce investment boards that can look to provide some training, and Jan can talk about, and resources to help the hiring of those new people. Mm -hmm. So that is another great program. Definitely. Well, thank you very much, Beth. You're welcome. So, Glenn, um, you want to talk a little bit about uh, what L3 Technologies and you know what you've been able to do to use the training and stay in Southern California? Certainly, yes. So my name is Glenn Grindstam. I'm with L3 Technologies Electron Devices in Torrance, California, and. Uh, we were a struggling $120 million company down there that was uh, struggling to get market share. 
uh, because the cost was killing us with our competition. And we needed to figure out ways as a company to uh, reduce our cost and improve our technical capabilities through training. And uh, we got that dreaded call from our corporate office in New York one day who said, uh, I think we're going to be shutting down the California locations and we're going to move them to cheaper states and reduce the cost of our business, business so that we can be more competitive with the competition. And I said, no, please don't do that. Let's look at this carefully. And so we, you know, we kind of basically put out a, a, an SOS to uh, the city of Torrance, where we are. And the mayor's team uh, there had worked with us and they pulled together a rapid response team, which included actually Jan was there part of that uh, rapid response with the South Bay Workforce Investment Board. The LA Economic Development Corporation was there as well. Uh, Southern California Edison was there. Representatives from the ETP programs, as you've heard spoken of, were there. Uh, and, and introduced us to a whole lot of different programs that could help us reduce our cost as a, as a business unit and achieve the training that we needed to be more competitive with our customers. We had about 20% of our market share. We're a satellite communications component manufacturer that enables telecommunication for both the military and commercial applications. And we needed to get more competitive against our one or two primary competitives, increase our market share from 20% to at least 40%. Well, I'm happy to say that through introductions that we made through that rapid response team, uh, we were introduced to the employment training panel. We applied for the training grant there of $350,000. We were fortunate enough to receive that training grant. And actually, I'm pleased to say just this morning as I was coming in, we got an email from the state of California saying we met 100% of our plan goals. So we've been actually able to realize all $350,000 about nine months earlier than we anticipated. And uh, so that's been an encouraging thing to do. And now we're going to go for another grant, this time for, uh, for $500,000. And so see if we can maximize that training. Well, part of that argument in terms of uh, getting this training that we needed to enable our employees to get technically advanced that would help fund and offset the training costs, help us to be more profitable and be gaining in our market share, along with all of the other reductions you know, from the Southern California Edison Company to get you know, the uh, business development rates, which saved us about 20%, which was $200,000 a year, along with a lot of other things. I'm gonna give a little shout out to our mayor as well. I actually brought him into our senior staff meeting one time and uh, introduced him to the team and was trying to rally with him, hey, help us keep this business, which employs at the time 400 employees in Torrance. It's, it's a lot of high paying uh, manufacturing jobs at you know 30 bu bucks an hour and up a lot of engineering jobs at $100,000 and up. So it would be something that would be a, a loss for Torrance in the South Bay, not to mention uprooting a lot of families. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was happy to come join us and uh, you know, he was talking about what they could do and we kind of capitalized on some of the other programs I had just shared. And he, and he asked, uh, he probably won't appreciate me saying this because all of you will want to go out and do this with your mayors, which I would encourage. And he says, is there anything else we can do? And I said, yeah, I actually just got this new, this bill this morning to renew our business license for $40,000 for the year. Can you help us with that? He literally took that bill and shredded it in front of us and said, it's taken care of for the year. That was great. So it only got better from there. So we, we took advantage of that and had a really good experience uh, with that. Uh, we partnered up with the South Bay Workforce Investment Board uh, and, uh, and with Jan and his team and got uh, working with the one-stop centers and the training of employees through that that's offset by state funding there as well. We actually had 11 or 12 interns through South Bay from the uh, one-stop shops throughout the summer. They go in three-month cycles and then we get new ones as well. Several of them we, we have hired and have turned out to be great employees. So it's a great program. You know, business, you know, I, everybody talks about how unfriendly California is to business. I was so very, very pleasantly surprised to learn how many things are out there that you can take advantage of. And California is not nearly as business unfriendly as you might think. There's so many programs to take advantage of. We also took advantage of the Cal Competes. We went out and got a, a million dollar grant to offset $250,000 a year worth of CapEx tax. Uh, and we got waivers for that. So it's over the next five years. We're in year two of that now, which was great because the corporate decided we're gonna go ahead and keep you in California. And furthermore, we're gonna consolidate our Northern California facility into yours. So instead of losing 400 jobs in Torrance, we actually gained another 250 jobs. So we're right about 600 employees now up from the 400 a year, year and a half ago, looking to add another 50 employees as well. 
And that's all disciplines from engineering to finance to marketing to manufacturing. All of that wouldn't be possible without being able to leverage the ETP training funds, the, the Cal Competes grants, the South Bay workforce, a lot of the things the LAEDC had offered, getting our mayor to tear up our bills, you know, those kind of things. So, you know, you basically just got to uncover every stone that's out there and it can really help your manufacturing business to grow. And now we're in a position where we're thriving right now and it's really exciting. Our business is picking up. We actually have a union shop too, which is even more unusual. Generally, you don't see companies combining non-union facilities into union facilities, but they've been very collaborative with us, the labor union, partnering with us, helping to fund training where they can as well, being sensitive with the dues and all of that type of thing for the employees' benefit. So as you pointed out, it is definitely a collaboration that you work with all of the partners and, and you can make it work. Yeah. You gotta work for it, but it's there and I encourage you all to, to take full advantage of it. Thank you so much, Glenn, that is, that is great. And I, uh, before we go on to Eldon, I, I do have a question for you on when you, you know, when, when you got that message that, hey, we might be shutting you guys down and you said, I gotta look at some options. What, how did you first decide, how did you know about to contact LAEDC? Well, it's interesting. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> so, okay. So I, the first thing I they did... They find you or you found them? I reached out to the mayor's office first. My first call to the mayor's office was actually to... They, they were, I was introduced to them through the mayor's office and the rapid response team. Okay. But my first call was to the, to the mayor's office, City of Torrance, to say, here's the dilemma we're facing. What can you guys do to help us? What I was looking for was business tax waivers. You know, how can we get our electric bills reduced? Anything and everything that we could possibly do. And they said, oh, well, we have a rapid response team that, that responds to these types of things. And the city of Torrance pulled that team together literally within a week. Right. They were in our, in our offices, and Jan was a part of that team. In fact, I think you were sitting right next to me that day when I was going through the, uh, the description. And, and they all just rose to the occasion, extremely helpful. LAEDC was a predominant player there, and they introduced me to all of the various uh, components that we could take advantage of and yeah, that, uh, that is a great story and, and yeah. it's so inspiring and um, just to give a just a little shout out on on the rapid response he's talking about sometimes they'll call them red teams rapid response teams so when a company contacts their um, you know they're, they're required if they're looking to do some layoffs or significant changes so if, you, if you're contacting your county and saying hey I'm struggling they, that's what that is. That was a team that was deployed very quickly. I mean, 400 jobs, that would be um, significant impact, not just for those 400 employees, but for the vendors and suppliers. It radiates out. So we want to support our California manufacturers. Absolutely. And as a result, we've doubled our revenue from $150 million to $300 million in 18 months. That's great. That, so that's exciting. exciting. That yeah, it's very exciting. exciting. I know we want to talk to you more about that. Eldon, okay, you are up next with El Camino College. Well, thank you, and I was going to say Eldon Davidson, El Camino College, I'm glad to be here. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about ETP. I know uh, that acronym is used a lot. I'm going to actually explain what it is to you. But first, El Camino College, we're one of the largest providers of ETP funding in the state. We can actually go statewide, and instead of going statewide, what we do is we collaborate with a lot of colleges, and I'll speak about that in just a moment. The one thing I can say... One thing I can say about ETP, if I was to really sum it up, ETP is about helping businesses. And I've been in other states, but I think ETP, California, definitely got it right when they created that program. Because the whole, the whole focus of ETP is to keep companies strong, keep them healthy, and keep them here in California. So if you ask what is ETP, which is the next slide, it's the Employment Training Panel how many of you in the audience have heard of the Employment Training Panel, ETP? Wow, a lot more than I thought. Because normally I get zero. Well, I talked about it earlier at the very beginning. Oh, that's right. So. That's the reason why. So there you go. <laughs> but you do know the unemployment tax. So one-tenth of one percent of your tax that you pay for unemployment goes into a training fund. And what ETP does, ETP is not a training agency what they do is they distribute the funding. You can get the funding in one of two ways. First, as a single employer, you can go directly to the panel and ask for the funding, or you can go through what's called a multiple employer contractor who will take care of all the paperwork for you so it allows you to do what you best, concentrate on your business, and the MEC actually does the rest for you. That's El Camino College. So. 
the, again, the whole go here is to strengthen companies, help them become competitive, and remain healthy in the, in the, the economy in uh, California. Next slide. Now, obviously, ETP can't give all the money back that it collects. So what they do is they prioritize certain industries, certain sectors in California. And there are several priorities. Agriculture is a priority. Healthcare is a priority. Biotechnology, life sciences, green clean technology, construction is a priority. Even information technology, the film industry, and one that I really outlined really big because that's what we're here for at West Tech is manufacturing. And I know at El Camino College, you know, there's manufacturing. You know, I've lived in several states. I don't think I've walked down a block and saw so many manufacturers in one block in my life. So there's a huge opportunity for you as a business. When I say business, I'm talking small business, less than 100 employees, and large businesses that are over 100 employees. You can actually contract it with a MEC, and I'm gonna explain that in a minute, like El Camino College, and you could actually um, ask us to come out and provide your company training, and there's several areas we'll talk about in a second, and we can do that under our funding. So there's no paperwork that you have to do other than fill out an application, uh, which I call a certification statement, which was really the easiest application I've ever seen in government in my life. It's three pages. Who are you? What do you do? Right. Pretty much. And what do you need? So we're going to talk a little bit about the next slide, about the different courses, because I said ETP is about improvement. So it's not about offering courses. So when you think of El Camino College, you're not thinking of us coming out and offering college level courses or courses to your company. What we're doing is we're actually getting with you because you know what the weaknesses are in your company. You can tell us these are the areas that we need to improve our productivity, uh, reduce cost, anything that we can do to help. And what we will do is we'll send, send an expert out to work with you to home in and coming up, I call it like a, a doctor who, with a prescription pad that writes out a prescription or formula that will help correct that situation. And it may be a series of courses. So those series of courses, and I give several, several of them, I'm gonna give one good example of a company that during the worst downturn of the economy, and that wasn't that many years ago, there was one company they uh, were in the forging business, aerospace, and they had presses like two, three stories high, working with titanium metal. But the return rates were very, very high, a lot of rejects. And what they found out was that's all obviously very costly, but we diagnosed the problem. First, the thing we did was vocational English as a second language. The second thing we did was take the next level, blueprint reading and math. We went to GDNT and we kept on going up the line from, from lean topics, whatever. During the worst downturn of the economy, they were able to turn their situation around and they actually added 200 and something jobs, wow, that's great. which is actually documented with ETP. And that's in our area, in the LA area. Mm -hmm. So that's a good example. The second example is a company that uh, was aerospace. They, they manufactured the, the the cockpit glass that goes in aircraft. And there's a little bit of magnification in that. And there was a little bit of a distortion in their manufacturing process. They could not figure out what the problem was. So it was a great opportunity to, to create a class called root cause analysis, bring their engineers in, bring key people in, and actually take that on as a project in their class. And they actually figured out the problem. There was a vent head. They have to bake that glass. There's a vent at the very top of the stack that would kick on that lower the temperature enough that caused that distortion. So one simple class probably saved you know, countless of dollars there. That's the purpose of it. So in front of you are all the courses that you see. It could be green belt training, blueprint reading. Probably the hottest topic right now, and I practice what I preach, is actually in computer skills. That's your business intelligence, your dashboards, your pivot tables. If you can just imagine sitting there with every gauge in front of you from accidents to downtime for a machine, you have all this right in front of you. We actually teach 
that. And we have a lot of bilingual instructors. So let me move on real quick to the next slide. And on this one, um, Eldon, I think, because we've got, um, for, for, for time, is we've got a, our booth at AmSoCal over here, where we're going to be talking more about like some of the you know, intricacies of the eligibility, uh, which you can see on the screen there. Um, you know a little bit and I want to make sure we get to your your next slide because I want to make sure you have time to talk about the collaborative right. and let's let's go ahead and do that because employee eligibility is pretty simple they're full-time employees and they have to meet a minimum wage so we'll move on to the very final slide because what we're trying to do in community colleges we understand 114 colleges across the state it's very difficult for a company to actually seek out these colleges, an L3 for example, or other companies that may have facilities located around the state, you know, it's very difficult to, to go through all the, those mazes. So what we did, we created the Community College ETP Collaborative. And this collaborative consists of, uh, at this point, 20-something colleges around the state and it continues to grow. And I'm proud to say Cerritos College, Bell Gomez, it's in the audience, you can wave your hand. She's one of those that collaborate. The whole thought here is we're making it easier for businesses to be a one-stop. So if you need expertise in plastics, for example, then we, must, we know who to make the connection with and we make it simple. We just go through our grant and we'll actually provide the training uh, trainers to your location. But again, what we're trying to do is make it easier for employers and where you don't have to go through those mazes and have that one-stop center to give you the training that you need. Mm -hmm. We do have, and I don't think you can click on the actual on link, it, yeah. but I do have handouts that will actually take you to our Chancellor's website that will show you uh, pretty much all the MECs, the multiple employer contractors that can provide funding. These are all the colleges. They have contacts, and they have trainers, everything that you need to get you started. And I'll have that handout at the very front after our session. Also, Bruce Angelet, that's in the audience there. You can also uh, tag him and he can help you as well. Okay, great. And thank you for sharing that. And, and you know, again, as when uh, Brenner Fiedler first did their training, their local community college, Riverside Community College, did not have uh, yet ETP funds. So it was connected through El Camino. So El Camino is really the, uh, the, the collaborator in all of this to make sure that again throughout the whole entire state of California there's 113 community colleges um, so there's resources available to you wherever your company is located so Jan I'm excited now to, to be able to talk to you about the wonderful programs at the at the WIBS I'll be happy to thank you and uh, good morning of course following these individuals there's not much left to say because <laughs> they've covered so much um, the South Bay Workforce Investment Board is one of several, seven boards actually, in Los Angeles County, and one of 46 boards in the state of California. And I guess the best way to think of what a workforce board is would be an intermediary. That is, every area, no matter what area you live in, or what area your business is in, there is a workforce board that is an umbrella agency for your area. So if you need assistance, the best thing to do is what Glenn said. Go get your mayor and have him tear up your, uh, <laughs> your, your invoice. But if that's impossible, probably the second best thing to do would be call your local workforce investment board. Now most of them are called Workforce Development Boards, but we call ourselves Workforce Investment Board. And I think there's a chart um, that would show the seven boards, their emails, their contact information. And it's very important because um, it may simply be you want information about training or you want information about hiring new people. Or it might be that you want your curb painted in order to uh, um, uh, eliminate traffic in front of your, in front of your uh, business. What we want to do, as the other members on this panel, is we want to make it as easy as possible
for you to be profitable. So whatever it may be, if you don't know the mayor, we do, and we'll talk to the mayor or their council people about problems, anything related to keeping you in the city that you're in or in the area that you're in. There's also each workforce area or workforce board has what they call one-stop centers or work source centers under their umbrella. There are about 38 work source centers in LA County. Uh, so each one of our boards have a number of centers under their jurisdiction. Those centers are where the rubber meets the road really for the individuals that want to get a job or want to upgrade their skills or businesses that want to make an initial contact there's probably a center right near your area there is a website on this um, on this screen cwdb.ca.gov and there's a list of all the local workforce boards in California so if you want to find one near you you can certainly do that but I think that's the best way to describe workforce boards would be intermediaries as to what we can do to assist you to stay where you are. Now, the next screen shows the various services that our one-stop centers and boards provide, anywhere from wage subsidy programs, recruitment assistance to fill vacancies. Right now we have a number of uh, recruitments going on right now. I think L3 was telling me, you have a recruitment of one of our centers mm -hmm. today or tomorrow. So it happens all the time. Pre-screening candidates, generating qualified applicants, background checks if you need background checks done, job fairs, all the time we have job fairs. We had a job fair for youth last April in order for the young people to uh, spend some quality time learning work skills in the summer and we had something like six, seven hundred young people from all over the South Bay in LA County attend that. 200, I think it was 250 individuals, 280 individuals were hired on the spot. Hmm. And another 150 or so were scheduled for second interviews. So uh, we want as many businesses as possible to be able to partake in those sessions. Publicizing your open positions, training for employees, resource assistance, assisting in downsizing or closures. Now, some of the programs that we have on the next slide. That's a, lot, be, of that's a lot of programs, Jan. A lot of programs, <laughs> and, and you know, um, it's not important for you to know, I don't think, what the, what the individual programs are called. It's important for you to know that there's assistance out there for you, and we'll slot you in the appropriate program. On-the-job training usually means that somebody's going to be working for you. During that time, you have to train them in order to get them uh, sufficiently skilled. And in most cases, we can provide a subsidy during that training period to offset the training costs that you have to, to, uh, to end up with a, a qualified em employee. Incumbent worker training, well, that, can, that, that certainly can be on-the-job training as well, but incumbent worker could also be customized training or classroom training. And a certain percentage of our base allocation, we are permitted to serve on incumbent workers, and, um, and more so than we ever have before. Now, of course, ETP, which you heard about, is probably the, uh, the primary source used for manufacturing throughout the state to benefit training your employees. But there's other, there's other uh, training funds as well, such as in WIA, 20% of our funds may be set aside to train incumbent workers. And they can be married to the ETP programs as also. Work-based learning benefits to employers to generate a pool of skilled and driven potential employees, collaborate. What, what we want to do with work-based learning is first of all, we want to provide and uh, design a path for individuals to become employees, advance their uh, skills so that it can become a career. Starting with high school kids. High school kids. 
uh, introducing them to the manufacturing sector as well as some of the other sectors we have. If we don't get them interested at that level, it may be good for you right now, but it's not going to be very good for you some years from now. So we want to introduce those young people. We want to provide internships for them at the businesses. And, um, and when they're going to college so that they can uh, take the right courses. We just started in the South Bay Workforce Investment Board a partnership with uh, Tooling U and with some of our local colleges, El Camino and West LA College, a program called Aeroflex. Aeroflex is starting out as a pre-apprenticeship program where we took a cohort of 20 young people in high school, placed them with employers this summer, and um, they're going to college in the fall and just couldn't be more successful. I mean, these young people were so excited about their summer experience. Well, we're going to turn this pre-apprenticeship program into an apprenticeship program. And we believe it will be the first engineering apprenticeship program of its kind, not only in the state, but possibly in the country. And uh, so we're piloted it under a pre-apprenticeship program. We're real excited about that. Um, and we also have, um, give you an example of some things that we were able to do with some employers. L3 Communications told you about their successes. There was a company in Carson that sent us a uh, notice that they were going to be laying off 60 individuals, manufacturing company. So we had an opportunity to sit down and speak to that company. And what we designed for them was a program to help retain those employees because what happened was as the work that they were doing was changing it was more important for them to master English language than it was to um, to be able to any particular skill in manufacturing so we brought in a, cl a classroom training individuals that would train them on uh, in English half the time the employer would pay for the workers to attend the class. The other half, the employees had to, uh, had to do voluntarily. We were able to pay the classroom training provider to teach them English. As a result of that, all 60 employees were kept on the job, and I think there were four or five of those individuals were upgraded to supervisors. So we saved it. So basically, we didn't know what was going to happen when we walked in there, but we listened to what the need was, and we sort of designed a program for them. And that's really, that's really what we want to do is listen. We also happen to be, South Bay Workforce Investment Board ha happens to be on the LA Air Force Base. So we're seeing these separated veterans sooner than anybody. So some of the manufacturing jobs that are open are, uh, are uh, gear, gear itself to the skills that some of those veterans have. So if you need those individuals, we're there to help you. We also maintain a training list for essentially all the workforce boards in LA County, also many of the boards in Orange County. So we have literally thousands of courses on our list on our website, it would say uh, the iTrain list. And that list has hundreds of schools, thousands of courses, so that if you're in need of referring some of your workers or workers-to-be, you want them to get certain expertise either before they come to you or while they're uh, in your employ, you can look at our list. In order to stay on our list, there have to be results. If, if our trainers um, if they're not resulting in jobs that those uh, potential employees are going through, they're going to come off our list because they have to maintain a certain standard. And we vet those trainers and we send industry experts to those sites to basically see whether or not that's a training school that we want to deal with. Sometimes we'll go to a school, might be a private school, public schools are automatically on our list, but to stay on our list they have to perform. As, as of course wanna, El Camino wanna, has. That actually, I've got two questions here that are talking about performance. So okay. it's, it ties I just want to finish this one, oh, sorry. one thought. So we'll go to a private school and they have equipment and the building is nice and the people are smiling and the, and the machines are all shiny.
but our industry expert will tell us it's archaic what they're teaching. It's no longer in vogue. Um, they're not going to be employable when they're finished here. And we were able to garner that information from the in industry experts that we take to these sites. So you have to be a quality school and get quality results to remain and to be on our list. Right. Sorry. So, and I didn't know if there was another, okay, that was your contact. I'll leave that up there. Um, so we have a, uh, there's a few questions that have, that have come over, so I want to make sure that we have time for that. And thank you so much, Dan, because one of the questions about the performance, and you mentioned apprenticeship. So someone is asking about apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship. Um, we want to talk a little bit more about that this is a new type of apprenticeship. It's a new model. Yeah. We're, um, you know, traditionally when you think of apprenticeships, you think of uh, uh, construction, you think of um, the labor unions, you think of electricians, you think of that sort of thing. But we're sort of evolving or trying to evolve into not thinking that narrowly. We deal with all of those apprentices as well, and we're putting many, many individuals into those programs. But there's other apprenticeships that can be started, and it could be almost anything. Like I said before, we're working with these kids to become engineers in the manufacturing industry, particularly aerospace. We're working with radio stations, uh, uh, heart radio, Heart Media, all across the country, they're interested in starting their own apprenticeship program. So an apprentice, an apprentice can be almost any occupation that you can think of. All it is is providing a pathway to get in the door and better your skills. And your incumbent workers certainly would be able to, to appreciate that as well. So we want to be able to start apprenticeship programs for you and make them as successful as you can. Because as I said before, you need the pool of workers in order to maintain your business successfully. It's also one other thing that's slightly off topic, but I want to throw it in. Okay. In the, in the tone of being a, an intermediary. We brought all of our cities together. We brought all of our chambers of commerce together. And we asked, what do you need? What's the thing that we can help you with the most? And one thing that happened was a, a, a large employer in uh, Torrance was leaving Torrance because of lack of broadband width within that city. So broadband width became a topic of discussion for us. So we were able to commission a study, and we were able to get $100,000 from the state. A study is now complete. Actually, it's on our website and it introduced us to new ways to increase our, the broadband width in our area, which will be tremendously beneficial to some businesses, to schools, and to individuals. And we're in the process of implementing that, which will also result in cheaper cost for access to the internet for, the, for our local businesses. So it can be something as crazy as that. Um, whatever the idea is, it's not too crazy for us to deal with so that we can hook you up with our great businesses, our great schools, our great partners. And again, we're one of seven workforce boards in L.A. County, and you have access to all of them. And, and in addition to, there's uh, a, over 50 uh, workforce boards and workforce development boards throughout the state. 46. So, yeah. So 40, 46 now. 46, right. Yeah. Now. Thank you. Uh, so, and, and again, uh, some of the programs that they're working with right now are through some uh, slingshot funds and some different things that provide incumbent worker training. So, um, back to the, the question that, the other question that popped up regarding performance, um, which I think is, is maybe related to a comment that you had made, um, Glenn, is you, you talked about that you had an, money and then now you're going after some additional money. So, I know that that's performance based. Correct. So you want to talk a little bit about how you get rewarded for your performance? Sure, yeah. So when we initially went for the uh, first ETP award contract, we were shooting for the 500000 but we hadn't done it before, so we had no track record or heritage or history. And they, before they invest that much money into you, which takes away money that they could invest in other businesses, they wanted to see how we did first, so they tried us with that 350000 And generally... If you're within 80% of your target, good chance you can increase your award. But the fact that we hit 100% of the target, 
nine months early is definitely going to give us, it bode well for us to go after the original 500,000 that we were hoping to get. And again, that training money is used to continue to increase the development of our employees, increasing the technology, because our technology is ever-changing and evolving, particularly in satellite communications. As we move into the low Earth and middle Earth orbit satellites, which are where all the live streaming goes and all your Netflix and all that, as well as the geosynchronous satellites, which is all the broadband and network uh, uh, communication satellites. In order to stay competitive there, and we talked earlier, I had about 20, we had about 20% of the market share as a result of the training and the cost being offset, as well as combining these two businesses now in Torrance, California, we've jumped from 20%, and you might recall our goal was to get to 40%. Now we're at 65% of the market share, which is really great to have that accomplishment in about a year and a half. So it wouldn't have been possible without you know the efforts of a lot of the organizations we've talked about here today, in particular the ETP as well, that helped us to offset training that we could have otherwise not, not done. That's great. And um, one of the things as well on that, thank you for sharing that, is, uh, and this is going to be my, my pitch to us, the collaboration of California. So there's money that comes through the state, which is that ETP money, because that's your un part of the unemployment tax that you pay. Then we have federal dollars that come through the state. So there's 50 states. We compete with the other states sometimes for these dollars. So the more that we show performance, the more that we are active as, a, as, a, you know, um, as an industry in showing that we need these training funds, the more that we can go. It's not like they say, well, we have a million dollars, and uh, so we'll now make it two million. That million stays the same, but what states get it? Uh, so we might be able to get more money. So I say that to, because we need that advocacy um, out there uh, to be able to you know, get the funding that we need to train our people to uh, remain competitive and grow, and you made a comment, you know, about, you know, people have this um, perception sometimes that, oh, we're difficult to do business with. And as you've seen here on this panel today is there are, you know, resources available to help you. And I work with businesses all the time, and I've worked with the colleges, I've worked with the WIBs for over 10 years, and when I go into a company and I say to them and share with them the resources, they're, they're their comment is always like, well, where has this been? I didn't know about this. And it's interesting because the WIBs and the colleges are always saying, how can we reach more employers? You know, how do we get to them? So, you know, thank you for being here in, uh, today to, to share with us on that. And um, we've got just a few more questions. Um, I'll look and see if we've got some additional ones that have popped up, but a few more that uh, I wrote down earlier was, you talked about industry experts. And, Beth, do you want to address a little bit about the importance of the quality of the trainer, um, that, how that helped you? Yeah, we basically have, I don't think we've had a bad trainer. We've had really good trainers, and like I say, some of them have come direct through whoever we were going through for the funding, the colleges and so forth. With, in the case of the, um, the person that we're working with now, he actually was referred to us by one of our people and we had to get him approved as an outside um, person. But there's a uh, strict, what would you call it, a correct criteria. Yeah, there's a guideline, to, right. Yeah, there's a guideline and criteria to get someone approved as a trainer. It's, you know, it's a high bar, which is good for all of us because then we get the training that we need and it's quality training. And as, as Eldon had pointed out, with that variety, you know, as we wrap up here, I want to, the variety of training available. So manufacturing skills training um, covers everything from that office, uh, using computer skills, the Excel training. I remember a few years ago at the ETP panel, the comment was made, well, why do we keep having these businesses ask for lean manufacturing and Excel training? And the, the response from Eldon was because they still need it. That continues to still be a high need. And as particularly with the lean manufacturing, it's a journey you're on. It's not like you're going to come in and do 40 hours worth of training and you've got it and it's over with. Um, you usually start with, a, as Brenner Fiedler did, um, they started with the core group. And then as those groups had those skills and were able to implement, then it spreads out to other parts of the organization. So it's all really important. Um, so as we close up, um, is there any uh, additional comments that you guys want to, you know, I'll put that out there. 
I have one. I have one comment I'd like to make is that get to know, get to know the one-stop center or workstore center near you. Before you hire somebody, talk to that center. Individuals that you were going to hire anyway, if you refer them back to the center, they can they can go through the employment development department and screen them if they're eligible for a tax credit. So you probably have people working for you right now that if that was done, you would be able to get tax credits for certain individuals that are that you hire. If you get if you establish that relationship, we can work it so that you get those tax credits if you're uh, if you hire those individuals or let the one-stop centers know you want to hire those individuals who will get you a tax credit. So that's something I wanted to remind you about. And so I also want to, as we wrap up, I want to thank all of you for attending today. And we've got the AMP SoCal booth, which is right next door here, um, as well as our Tooling USME booth on the other side of the showroom floor. One of the things that, uh, you know, Tooling USME, it's so important to us to be an advocate for this industry. So reach out to us because we have the connections with these resources and we'll connect you to the right partners for the different things you need. So if you're not sure who to talk to in your area, we know and we are here to help you with that. And so we've got um, all that information over there. I'd like to give a big round of applause to our panelists.